bonjour mes amours, mes petits diaphragmes contraceptifs, mes reprouvés chéris. How are you today? Uh, housekeeping. I need money uh, because there's a bunch of work that needs to be done on the house so and I need to make it reasonably quickly so um, if you've got any small-scale freelancing editing uh, anything like that that you need done or you want me to to weigh in on uh, now's the time <laughs> unfortunately I feel like I've kind of lost my mojo at the moment. Some of that is the sort of inverse sads I seem to get. Um, warm weather, sunshine, always seems to set off my depression for whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, bit of a bit of a struggle there. Uh, but I do need money, so Ronin is probably going to take a little bit of a back seat while I wait on some collaborators and so on to do stuff for me anyway um, and I'll be concentrating on old half finished projects or, or quick things that I can bang out relatively easily uh, to make some money um, I'll continue to spend money on projects I've already made commitments to um, and artwork for Ronin but for any of these kind of quick and dirty projects that I need to bang out to make some money, uh, probably, unfortunately, that's going to mean AI art because I need to raise about four grand, all told. Uh, so uh, you you see my problem. Uh, hopefully people will be slightly forgiving uh, if I explain the reasons why. So yeah, expect a lot of quick, fast material um, I mean, the quality will still be there as much as I can manage, but uh, I, I need to make some bar pretty quick. So again, um, if you've got any freelancing, editing, stuff like that, that's not too big a project, uh, then let me know and I'm willing to work on it. Um, also, it's probably worth mentioning my Patreon again. Yeah, if everyone who watches the channel every month put in a buck a month to my patreon uh, not only would that encourage me to create patron only content to a much larger degree than i already do uh, but it would uh, also solve the problem very nicely <laughs> so uh i mean you know i i work hard as much as i can um so your 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 existing support means the world but uh, obviously it would be lovely if more people signed up. But at the same time, I recognize that things are tight all over. Um, speaking of which, stop the Tories, don't vote. Or uh, less eloquently, fuck the Tories, specifically. All right, moving on to comments. Now, uh, after the marathon sessions of recent weeks, um, I, I had lots of comments, but... Most of them were fairly nice and agreeable or didn't particularly need me to reply much more than I already have in text. So things might go a little short, but there's a few argumentative wankers who posted enormous screeds uh, and whom I'd, I'd said I would reply to in the comments video. So strap yourselves down for that, I guess. Right. On the heavy gear for review... Uh, someone whose name is missing from the cut and paste, I apologise, says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who is let down by the fourth edition. I really wanted this to be excellent, uh, but it just isn't that great. I suspect that the, the, the new system actually works well, but it's been overly complicated in a deliberate attempt to make it more modern and flexible. Reliable dice, undefined attributes, quirks, and player-defined skill lists all sound good, but they just bog things down. I'm a fan of the way they changed the basic mechanic, though, with target numbers and dice pool building. I'd love to run something using a stripped-down version of the system, but it would re require an amount of work that I'm just not willing to do. I will say that while I too adore the first and second editions of Heavy Gear, the silhouette system has some major issues that come up, 
A tribute's are way too strong and long-term campaign play could get a little broken. Still lots of good times with 2nd edition heavy gear. And I guess I'll just keep my PDF of the 4th edition and that's that. I mean, you could still use the old stats and way of doing things with the new dice system and target numbers. And theoretically, um, that should work. Um, it might get a little bit fiddly here and there, but theoretically it should work. But all things considered, it's just... To me, it's a massive shame that they tossed out what was super good about the older editions of the game uh, pursuing this particular line but only ending up kind of halfway there um, it's like they were trying to imitate the new Robotech games and they're much more story led um, definitions of characters and so on but didn't quite have the, the bottle for it probably due to still wanting to be somewhat compatible uh, with wargaming in the same world. Um, but it just comes off as kind of neither thing uh, and desperately lacking the, the elegance and appeal of the earlier editions um, and the silhouette system as presented in Silhouette Core. So, yeah, it's a, it's a massive shame. Um, I, I was much disappointed. But at least I didn't pay the exorbitant prices they're charging for print-on-demand. God knows what that's all about. Because um, they definitely don't need to. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, on the Fabula review, but nothing to do with the Fabula review. In fact, most people seemed interested in my um, childhood books. <laughs> than anything else. Uh, but Plix Linuxy says, Up next, Grimm makes the official Lady Agrippa RPG. One billion classes with one billion chutney recipe powers. Oh, don't, don't tempt me. On uh, why don't you go and play Afro Samurai instead, uh, which was a play on why don't you if you're a Brit of a certain age, uh, about Yasuke in the Assassin's Creed thing. Um, most people were somewhat sanguine or appreciative of the nuance. And then there's this cunt. Uh, Nightmare Banana Fall says, TLDR, uh, a white dude, bit racist, with cool glasses, thank you, spends 12 minutes talking slowly. <sighs> am I too fast or am I too slow? Make it minds people. About how a black guy isn't historically accurate enough for AC. Well, that's uh, not a particularly charitable uh, read on that. It's not how a black guy isn't historically accurate enough for AC. It's that a game series that has prided itself on strong elements of historical accuracy has tossed that out the window and not had a Japanese main protagonist. It's not that the guy is black, it's just like the same way how in, say, 10th century Bohemia it would be out of place um, you know, to make him a, a knight or something, right? Uh, banana goes on ah, it's about three minutes in and your reasoning is already kind of ass the difference between Shadowfax being a horse and a Honda Civic is that it doesn't fit within the setting described right exactly uh, as something that requires meta knowledge of the modern era to identify substitute any car or internal combustion vehicle or whatever else yeah the point is it doesn't fit which you seem to understand when it comes to the to the honda but not when it comes to making yasuke all these things that he wasn't uh when you claim some kind of historical plausibility if it would have been described as a four-wheeled chariot powered by an unknown mechanism or something more in line with other descriptions in the book you don't have this problem again you're missing the point I did just skim your catalogue and I don't see you making the same argument in regards to The Last Samurai or any similar media where the main character was white. So what makes this different? Uh, after this I finished the video. Okay, I wasn't making videos in 2003 so I think that's when The Last Samurai came out. So there's, there's that. Um, also it didn't particularly claim 
to be historically accurate in the same way. Um, the, Tom Cruise's character is an amalgam of at least two Western uh, people uh, folded into one. Um, but I have made exactly the same commentary in a different way as appropriate about Ghost in the Shell to a degree, the, the film version, uh, the proposed film remake of Akira set in the United States and numerous others. Uh, and as regards to the historicity of Assassin's Creed, being a historically based game does not mean it is always in line with history. <laughs> uh, duh. Uh, I take this about on the same level as based on a true story. The people and names likely existed, but the actions and events are played up for entertainment. If you think it's dumb that a black dude who did exist was given a more theatrical importance in a game that's done this exact thing with other historical figures throughout the series, you do the math. You aren't providing a nuance here, you're just taking more words to say the quiet part out loud. If all you hear is dog whistles, you're the dog. Right, my point is that it is not fitting, that it is erring too far away from the historicity that used to be a hallmark of the series, that it is DEI nonsense, that it is appealing to the likes of the black Hebrew Israelites who think everything was black people forever anywhere around the world, right? It doesn't fit to change the history like this. The Gandalf Honda Civic example is what's called a reductio absurdum, where we take something and pan it out to its radical extreme. So, you know, this is on a continuum but the point is, it doesn't fit. It jars. It throws you out of the game, out of your immersion in the game. It, it, it just doesn't work. The fact that the guy is black is irrelevant. Right? You could make up a, a, a new character with a different rationale or whatever, and it would probably be less of a problem because you're actively fictionalizing it in a way similar to, say, oh, I don't know, Shogun, for example. Um, though there are, again, there are real-life examples for that to be based upon, but turning Yasuke into something he wasn't to uh, appeal to the black supremacists out there uh, it doesn't strike me as a particularly good idea, and it's immersion-breaking. It doesn't make sense. Yasuke, as they're presenting him in this Assassin's Creed, is a Honda Civic in Middle Earth. Nightmare Banana then goes on, because I said he almost had it at the start of that sentence about the Honda. He says, uh, and you almost had it, but that part you cut off adds the reason it doesn't fit in the setting. No, the reason it doesn't fit in the setting is because it doesn't fit in the setting. Uh, how it's described. Read the whole sentence before interpreting, but that's where you went wrong. I didn't add the second half to hit a word count. No, but you carried on after you seemed to get it. Uh, the DEI ghouls are a made-up boogeyman the same way the evil Satanists were made up in the 90s. No. Uh, the evil Satanists didn't exist and never existed. The DEI ghouls do and have for a very long time, uh, all the way back to Silver String Media. Uh, they run protection rackets on games. We we know this. They are outed by their own words. They are on video. <laughs> Just because the right wing has blown this up far beyond what it actually is doesn't mean what it actually is isn't an issue. Uh, he goes on to say, it's just attempting to assign blame to a minority group for systemic problems. No. You're just finding a flowery way to be racist. No, go fuck yourself. Uh, and I assumed you capable capable of retrospection to at least 2003 since you're whining about a black guy from over 400 years ago. No, you moron, I wasn't making videos in 2003. That's the point, so why would I have covered it? <sighs> right. The DEI thing is a problem. Why is it a problem? It's a problem because they are prioritizing what they think of as inclusion over all other elements. Verisimilitude. Suspension of disbelief, plausibility, story, plot, uh, serving 
even racial minorities that haven't been served up until this point and so on and so on and so on they inshitify everything they get their hands on there are good ways to do the things that they want to do but they are not interested in doing them they don't care about historicity they don't care about accuracy they don't care about good story they are about a box ticking exercise and mangling and hammering things into shape and as a result we tend to end up with a less good product and it's about pandering i am in quite a few little minority groups as a person and i find this patronizing and disgusting and it results in a less good product i don't want to be patronized to i want better products i if i'm going to see stories about people whose little identity categories I'm in well for one I don't care but if they do do that I want good stories first and foremost you wanker uh, Ghost of Tamalorn says do you know what would have been a more suitable game an assassin's game in Africa Egypt doesn't count poor Egypt never counts uh, perhaps more east or west Africa or perhaps we could have uh, an African protagonist uh, who's a Boer during the Boer War? How about that? <laughs> uh, on my election video, you're an electionary. Uh, Edward Kopp says, isn't your Labour Party anti-Semitic? My Canadian Jewish friends have been pretty down on them. Yes and no. Uh, much more on the no side this time. Obviously when you're an ostensibly anti-capitalist party with some further left elements under your broad umbrella and there's a certain amount of um, crossover between you know archly capitalist stereotypes and anti-semitic stereotypes you'll also tend to find a lot of human rights campaigners who are for obvious reasons against the kind of things that Israel sometimes gets up to or is getting up to at the moment and it's very easy for enemies of the party to characterize a lot of genuine objections and issues as anti-semitism and it also provides cover for genuine anti-semites so the previous leader Jeremy Corbyn was very sort of active uh, both in anti-capitalism and campaigning against things going on in Israel and so it was very easy to paint him as an anti-Semite and maybe he is some of the people who were in his orbit certainly were um, and then when the new leadership came in they kind of took a broom to all that and anyone who even remotely seems slightly anti-Semitic is now kicked to the curb this may have ended up backfiring and may soften Labour's seeming inevitable victory in the coming election uh, because there are fairly large cohorts of uh, South Asian and Middle Eastern voters in primarily urban Labour districts who would normally vote Labour but won't uh, due to them being a bit soft pedal on Israel. So yeah it, it's it's like all things it is nuanced and tricky on an older video about dungeons and disabilities uh someone called Hartthorne wrote several essays uh, i don't want to be accused of taking them out of context so let's go Hartthorne says it's so funny that your entire argument is completely facile there's not one single person that is saying you specifically have to make every one of your characters have your disability I've played plenty of characters that do not have my disabilities but I also have played plenty that do and y'all are the ones trying to tell other people what they are and are not allowed to play y'all are the ones getting tetchy at the existence of these rules uh, and these characters that you're more than allowed to just ignore if for whatever reason you find the entire class of cleric to be obnoxious you could just not allow them at your table false equivalence but hey ho uh, but you don't get to disallow them at anyone else's table that's literally the beginning and end of the argument there are games out there that i think suck i might on some rare occasion their existence is brought to my attention again mention that i think they suck 
but I couldn't even be bothered trying to tell someone who likes the game that they're not allowed to play it. We all know Fatal is a craptastic game, but if someone has decided to play it, well damn Godspeed, you dumb emperor. I can call a book racist. I can point out racist concepts in the book. I can show times the creator said racist shit. None of that is ever going to give me the ability to stop someone else from using it. I might say I don't want those kinds of players at my table and I'm allowed to make that restriction. If you don't want someone who uses the combat wheelchair rules to play at your table, that's the end of the discussion. They aren't allowed there. And yes, you might catch some flack for that call, but that's kind of how this works. If I decided to play Equestrian Knights, the My Little Pony RPG, I wouldn't be surprised if some people had thoughts on it. Like seriously, the end of the day, say your piece and move on. Half the issue with the disability at the table discourse is the people who don't want these rules at their tables insert themselves into conversations that aren't about their tables. They take personal umbrage with other people playing the game the way they want to play it. Write your pithy one-liner and then leave. Clearly this is not the conversation for you. Go out and find a conversation about something you do want to have at your table. Oh my poor sweet summer child, you have everything exactly backwards. Right, because it is the pro people that are harassing everyone online. It is the pro people who are insisting that if they turn up at your table at a convention or a game club or a store game or whatever else, that they must be allowed to play their weird self-insert character. Right? Everyone else is resisting that. And it's more than just you can ignore it. It's being put into what seems like every game now, along with those retarded safety rules. And you will be attacked, you will be cancelled, and so on, just for disagreeing. Right? Even if you are disabled yourself, and you explain eloquently, as I do, what your objections are about being pandered to, and how stupid it is and how what kind of difficulties people would have with disabilities trying to adventure and the combat wheelchair is ridiculously op and inexpensive for what it is and it takes away the point of playing a disabled character which is to be fucking disabled <laughs> what's the point of playing a disabled character where it has precisely zero impact on your ability to cope with dungeons and so on. Then that would defeat the object of playing one or or even self-inserting. So, I mean, how you get this exactly backwards, I do not know. You're clearly commenting from Bizarro World. But that's not all. He goes on. Um, Heartthorn says, Been there since the beginning, and it's the exact same pattern every time, that some people want to include this in their games, gets a bunch of people who don't, making up every excuse under the sun of why it won't work. Because it won't. And every single reason is both dopey as hell, it's not, as well as entirely irrelevant, it's not, because it's not their table. It is. It's everyone's table. Excuses like magic can just fix it, it can, uh, which isn't actually rules as written, it is. Or that there should be more penalties, which would violate already existing rules. No. Uh, plus real-world examples of disabled people doing the exact thing. No. It's not realistic. Correct. Uh, yeah, neither is the entire rest of the game. Oh no, it's the but my dragons argument. And no, not the magic and fireballs, uh, but even the supposed to be realistic stuff. Encumbrance, movement speeds, the entire concept of hit points. All utterly baffling nonsense if you were to apply a real-world perspective to them. Again, it's just not an excuse to toss reality out of the window. Right? The fantastical elements demand that other elements be more realistic. And just because there is magic and fireballs, and even hit points... It doesn't mean that someone in a crude 17th century style wheelchair is going to have an easy time of it navigating a spiral staircase, for fuck's sake. No one is trying to make you use them. They are. No one is saying you must make your character with your own disability. That much at least is true, but they are saying you must accept people playing disabled characters at your table. The boldest statement you're going to hear is, I wish more tables included this kind of material, or I wish more games had these kind of rules, which still has fuck all to do with what you do at your table. No, um, 
the most you're going to hear is if you don't let me play this if you don't include these rules you're a racist and a bigot and we're going to tell everyone you're a racist and a bigot and we're going to one star all your products and we're going to talk to all your friends and say do you really want to be friends with someone who is such an ableist racist sexist bigot etc 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 i mean again you have it entirely backwards the harassment is 90% one way and it's coming from the assholes who want to do this um, if you want to include disabled people at your table or whatever else and you don't want it to have any consequence or impact on the game whatsoever knock yourselves out but stop harassing people who disagree and who point out why they disagree um, and stop abusing systems to go after them Hartthorne further goes on to say, how are they trying to impose it on anyone? Well, we've just covered that. That it exists. They say, wow, this should be at every table uh, in hyperbolic praise. Not in hyperbolic praise. They mean it. Even if it's in the core rules, like with Cyberpunk Red, I mean, it's not, but it's still shit that it's in there. Uh, it's still a subsystem that pairs with the assumption that the majority of characters are fully abled. No one can impose this on you. Stop acting like the victim of shit that's impossible. Again, conventions, club games, store games, right? and the constant online harassment, harassment that goes on. Right? There are attempts to impose it uh, by these people who need to fuck off. Hartthorne continues. It's in like three high-profile game books. The primary harassment is against the people making disability content. No, it isn't. Being disagreed with is not harassment. Uh, and yeah, again, if you show up at my table and make a stink that I'm using this content or these themes, guess what? Move the fuck along and find a different table. <sighs> again, we've covered all that. And hey, I will say that advice is just as much applies if I show up to your table and want to play my blind genderqueer dancing bard. If you say we don't do that, or even this is how we're going to do that, it's on me to accept your table's guidelines or move the fuck along. Except, motherfuckers like you don't. You kick up a stink. You get people kicked out of conventions. Uh, you get people cancelled. So go fuck yourself. Same with safety tools. If you don't have them, I might mention, might object, but if it's a clear stance, I will just not play with you. Which is the only use they have, is filtering out wankers. A con might require them as a matter of policy for their own protection. Never needed them for 40 years before that. In which case, that is again their right to do so, and you can play elsewhere. Such as where, exactly. Uh, plus it creates an unsafe atmosphere where wankers like you can weaponize those quote-unquote safety tools to fuck with people, and that has happened on multiple occasions. Hartthorne finishes up, by saying that's not even an attempt to refute my points well when you don't have any points there's nothing to refute maybe there are more books but pretending it's anywhere near ubiquitous is silly as fuck the rest of my comment is just facts well this must be some strange new definition of the word facts that i was previously unaware of it is ubiquitous it is oppressive uh, it is enforced by harassment and social exclusion and disingenuous characterization of any objection as being istophobic. Um, so I said I'd give you a nice long reply in my comments video. Here it is. Uh, you're going to be one of my rare bands from the channel. Go fuck yourself. And lastly, on the Kalergi plan. Uh, see, Hartthorne, here's, here's how you do the same kind of thing without wasting so many photons on people's computer screens. Uh, Pip5935 uh, says, lol, soy boy leftist. You see, that has all the intellectual content that your comments had in a single sentence. Uh, and uh, we can just skip straight to go fuck yourself. And it's so much more efficient. Uh, Javiano Inglesias says, When the Spanish landed in South America, they intermarried with the local tribes. The result is the Latino people. Uh, yes, replacement can happen. Nobody was replaced in that instance, were they? People intermarried, as you said, became a blended population. But there are still aspects of those local native cultures there. 
So, and that's over many more hundreds of years and in a time without modern medicine where the many, many plagues they carried over from Europe uh, did a real number on the local population. So it's not, it's not a valid comparison and there's no replacement in your example. So you two can go fuck yourself. Uh, I tell you what, everyone can go fuck themselves. That's the kind of self-insert we should be advocating for. Zang. Pulp Nova is a collection of short stories, in the old pulp style but with a modern twist. You should find something here you like, from western, to mythos horror, to science fiction. You can get Pulp Nova at Drive Through Fiction, on Amazon, or in hard copy from lulu.com. <laughs>